Hello and welcome to a MCCEE tutoring services video providing you with all your USMLE and Medical Council of Canada exam content needs. As always, check the description below to skip ahead to the section you want. You can also check out my website for more tools to help you do well on your exams. This presentation will cover the first video of the chest pain video series, Myocardial Infarction. It should be of no surprise that chest pain is a massive topic. We will start with the low-hanging fruit, and in future videos we will tackle the less well-known material that is still essential to understand. Let's start with a problem. A 49-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, COPD, and diabetes mellitus presents to the ER with severe chest discomfort and shortness of breath for the last 30 minutes. It radiates down the left arm and he is diaphoretic. The symptoms began while shoveling snow. He says this happens often, but generally disappears with rest, just not this time. ST elevations are in leads 1 and AVL. What has likely occurred? Let's come back to this question a bit later on. Epidemiology. It's most common in those who are over the age of 40 and male. It's the leading cause of death in North America despite the decline in incidence in STEMI. But you have to bear in mind that NSTEMIs are on the rise, and I'll explain those later. It's important to note they occur in and out of hospitals, so all chest pain is important to explore. Silent heart attacks occur most frequently with the elderly, diabetics, and women. Myocardial infarction, MI, is also known as acute coronary artery or acute coronary syndrome, ACS, and can be the result of coronary artery disease. But remember, it can be the result of other things, such as cocaine use or broken heart syndrome. The most common cause of death due to MI is arrhythmias. And one final note, most people with MI do have angina pectoris. Risk factors. So coronary artery disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, being old, hyperlipidemia, sedentary lifestyle, genetics, and smoking, and many more all contribute to risk factors for heart disease. Pathophysiology. An MI can occur when a plaque that builds up in the arteries ruptures, causing a clot to form, blocking off the entire coronary artery. It can also occur with vasospasm, such as in variant or principental angina, as well as taking certain drugs, such as in supply demand imbalance, which would include diprotamol or nitroglycerin. It's also important to note the different types of infarctions. In S with ST depressions or just uh, depolarization defects, um, subendocardial injury can occur, such as the one on the left in this image. However, with an ST elevated infarction, it is most commonly a transmural infarct to the whole epicardium. Signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms are various, but they do include chest discomfort, arm or back discomfort, neck or jaw discomfort, trouble breathing with or without chest discomfort, feeling lightheaded or breaking into a cold sweat, syncope, or feeling sick um, or ill. Other signs include a S4 gallop rhythm, which is blood flow into a stiff ventricle. Some diagnostic tests that can be used include troponins, which are seen here, and as you can see, they are elevated relatively soon after MI, but they take days to decrease, whereas the older, less sensitive CKMB can be used more for if the person had had a heart attack several days before, you can now check to see if they've had a new onset heart attack due to the fact that CKMB decreases very rapidly. On EKG, you can look for just normal EKG findings, such as in the top left corner of this 
image, as well as in NSTEMIs, on the right-hand side, you can see ST depressions or T-wave inversions, whereas in STEMIs, that is an ST ele elevation, is in the bottom left-hand corner. And as you can see here, infarcts in different leads have different interpretations, such as with the ischemic changes in leads 1 in AVL is called a lateral infarct and affects the circumflex artery. And ischemic changes in leads V1 and V2 is called a posterior infarct and affects the RCA. Ischemic changes in leads 1 or sorry, V1 to V4 is called an anterior infarct and affects the left anterior descending artery. And ischemic changes in leads 2, 3, and AVF is called an inferior infarct and affects the RCA or LCA. Be wary of the effects of an inferior infarct on the right ventricle, and I will cover this in a future video. In summary, coronary artery disease is the leading cause of death in North America. It is most common in those over the age of 40 and male. Atypical signs and symptoms are more common in the elderly, women, and diabetics. Risk factors are various. Signs and symptoms are variable, but include chest pain and discomfort that radiates to many different parts of the body, including the jaw and arms. Shortness of breath, nausea and vomiting, and just not feeling well diaphoresis and anxiety, and an S4 heart sound. Laboratory tests, such as, and clinical tests, such as an EKG, may show ST elevation, depression, T-wave inversions, or nothing at all due to the timing. And troponin I may be elevated, but that does take time to change. NSTEMI, or non-ST elevated myocardial infarct, is a subendocardial infarct, while STEMIs are transmural. Ischemic changes in leads 2, 3 AVF called the inferior infarct and affects the right coronary artery or the left coronary artery. Be wary of the effects on the right ventricle. Ischemic changes in leads 1 and AVL is called a lateral infarct and affects the circumflex artery, whereas V1 and V2 is a posterior infarct and affects the RCA. And ischemic changes in leads V1 to V4 is called an anterior infarct and affects the left anterior descending. Let's go back to this practice question. So the possibilities are plaque rupture, coronary artery vasospasm, and gradual plaque occlusion, as well as pericardial inflammation. If you need a few seconds to think, pause the video now. The answer here is plaque rupture. It is important to understand what each possible answer choice means. Coronary artery vasospasm is what occurs in variant angina, which is more common in females and less likely in some of the risk factors for CAD. Gradual plaque occlusion occurs in stable angina, which will not have ST elevations and will remit with rest. Pericardial inflammation occurs in pericarditis, but it generally has diffuse ST elevation. So this is the end of the video. Tune in next time when I will talk about the treatment of myocardial infarctions and potential complications. This is a very high yield topic. This has been a MCCEE Tutoring Services production. For a link to my website, see the video description where you can learn more about what MCCEE Tutoring Services has to offer. Thank you and have a great day.